Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel, it's Chelsea, where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. So today, we're talking about the new brand launched by Samantha Ravenall. She is a creator here on YouTube named Org, and I cannot wait to show you these products in action and share my thoughts with you. So I did purchase the Glow Lust, and I also purchased two of her eyeshadows. So definitely stay tuned for application, demonstration, and comparison with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Thank you so much for taking time and clicking on my video. I hope that you consider subscribing to my channel and let's get right into this video. So like I said, we are talking about Auric and oh, I was really excited when I heard about the launch of this brand. So when I saw this brand on Trend Mood's website, I was like, ooh, I'm very interested. And so I picked up the Glow Lust illuminator and then i also picked up two of the eyeshadow duos so first of all the packaging of these products is extremely beautiful um samantha i, I did watch her reveal video and she did mention that the name auric to them means gold together she really wanted to create a brand that was inclusive that represented all people and also she wanted a name that really was defined by luxury and she said when she did her research on gold no matter what country no matter what the culture was everyone esteemed the term gold so that's what auric means to her and the brand and she said that when she was transitioning to only using cruelty-free products, she realized that she was going to have to leave behind some of her favorite types of products. And so she decided, I'm going to create those products for myself and make sure that they are the way that I want them to be, but also based on being cruelty-free. So starting with Gold Lust, this is the liquid illuminator. And here is the packaging of Gold Lust. I purchased the shade Citrine. This does come in seven flexible shades and it does retail for $45. We get 1.18 fluid ounces or 35 milliliters of product. And I can definitely say that there's no way that I'm running out of this product anytime soon because you only need a little bit depending on how you want to use it across the face and one pump definitely gives you a good amount for full face and more so i like that the product is going to be a long lasting product i also like the price of this too she does refer to her brand as a luxury brand and i feel like for 45 dollars we're still in the high end category we're not crossing over into those luxury prices love the packaging she chose glass bottles because she wanted it to be recyclable i love that on the cap you find the name auric and then she describes the gold drip on the side the cap is definitely a secure cap and we get a pump with it and i love how she talked about the raving of the pump like we tried and tested and this pump is definitely going to be one that you should appreciate so I purchased the shade, like I said, Citrine. That is the shade that I'm wearing on this side of the face. And Citrine is described as a medium warm. I really did also like that she included various undertones with this particular illuminator. And so usually with an illuminator, you're gonna get the standard kind of gold, champagne, pink based ones. But she actually adapted this to complexion. So we've got neutral, we have olive toned, we've got cool ones, of course, warm ones. And so it actually, in my opinion, kind of elevates the product from simply an illuminator to an actual face base or a real mixing component because you've got a really nice undertone that will complement your complexion. In terms of the details of the product, she wanted this product to be very flexible, not just in formulation, but also in use. So you can use this on your face alone. You can also use it mixing it in with your foundation, or you can actually use it more like a liquid illuminator and top it, which I am gonna show you all a demonstration of that in this video. Um, some things that she says about the product is it's packed with ultra fine pearl and a skin loving mix of squalene, glycerin and porcelain flower. This is an artistry grade adjustable formula that gives you instant radiance and hydration. Really, really, I have to say I really enjoy this product. Now, comparing it to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, I am wearing on this side of the face. It does retail for $44, and we get a total of one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters of product. 
And this particular product, we get a total of 11 shades. And the undertones in this particular product are gonna range from neutral, peachy, warm, and your deep warm ones. Um, I would say for this particular product, although there are less shades, if you are olive toned, you might want to look at Oryx uh, option first because there's actually a shade that is better suited for olive complexions. Um, this particular product I love. I have had a long standing relationship and affair with this product for at least two years now. I swear by it. I call it my magic in a bottle. I love just the the way it makes your skin look glassy and hydrated and rich and healthy. Like it does so much for the skin in my opinion. So when I saw this come out, I immediately said I have to compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter because I know how this product works. I've used it time and time again under my foundation, mixed in with my foundation, used it on top of my foundation. And so I really wanted to compare the two. In terms of just some high points of this particular product, it's going to be lightweight. It has finely milled powders that are gonna blur lines and pores for a smoother, soft focus look. It also has porcelain flower extract that is going to visibly brighten and moisturize the skin. And it has a glossy oil that is a lightweight moisturizing oil that will reflect and add light where you need it. And I will admit, I feel like this particular product and what I love most about it is that it is so reflective on the face. So if I decide to just use the product by itself, I feel like my face already looks highlighted. It looks very lifted and lightened. And so I definitely would agree to those claims as is stated for this product. The Charlotte Tilbury product is going to be free of parabens and it's also going to be gluten-free and cruelty-free. And this particular product also has squalene in it and it is fragrance-free. The Auric Glow Lust is going to be glitter-free, fragrance-free, paraben-free, cruelty-free and gluten-free. This particular product is made in Italy as well as the Charlotte Tilbury product. So in terms of, you know, product, ingredients and things like that, we're looking at very two similar products, but we do have some differences. So one of the major differences that I noticed right off the back is that the Auric product is going to be a little thicker than the Charlotte Tilbury product. And when I put it on my face, I definitely felt like this went on more like a foundation. I felt like I got a little bit more coverage from this particular product. And in terms of the way that it looked, this particular shade definitely left my face looking a little warmer than the Charlotte Tilbury product. For the Charlotte Tilbury product, I have the shade 5.5 Tan, which is described as a neutral caramel for tan skin tones. And so when looking at these products side by side, I definitely feel like this side of my face once they were initially applied, definitely have had a warmer tone to it than this side of the face. Um, I also feel like I have more coverage on this side of the face than I do this side of the face. The foundation that I use for today, the Kojindo Aqua Foundation, and I use just a small amount of the foundation because I really wanted to focus on these two products here just to see coverage-wise what I'm getting and um, how everything is looking. I, I chose this foundation because it is a little dry on my skin, even though it's the Aqua Foundation. And so whenever I wear this, I usually always wear the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter underneath to give it some hydration. And so if you're looking at my face, and I'll come in just a little closer, I feel like you can see more coverage around here than you do right here. And I think that additional coverage is coming from the Auric Glow Less because for concealer, I went in with a light base concealer, the YSL Touche Clot Radiant Touch Concealer Pen and I wear the shade five. This is a very lightweight concealer. And then I use Charlotte Tilbury powder and Pat McGrath's powder as my under eye and T-zone powder. So on my face, I have very lightweight based products. And so I'm thinking, and it's, the only thing that I can conclude is that this additional coverage that I'm seeing all along here is definitely coming from the Glow Less, which I think is pretty awesome because initially I was just like, I'm not going to put on foundation. I'm just going to leave my face as is, add on some cream blush, a little bit of bronzer and call it a day. And I really feel like you can so do this 
with this Auric product. With the Charlotte Tilbury product, I have done it before where I've just used this product, added on a cream blush, a little bit of bronzer, and like went out the door. And I think it's suitable, but you're definitely getting lighter coverage with this product. So the Charlotte Tilbury product will just dull the redness. I feel like with the Auric product, we could actually probably get like light, light medium type of coverage for maybe some redness, tone down, you know, some of the acne scars that you might have on your face. Like I have freckles and you can definitely still see my freckles, but I feel like they're just a little bit more covered on this side of the face than on this side of the face. I enjoy both products, but I'm definitely here for this glow less. Definitely here for this glow less. Now moving on to the eyeshadows. So I purchased two of the three shades of the eyeshadows. I have the shade Temper on this eye and the shade Ego on this eye. The one shade that I could not get that I really, really wanted was the shade Defiance. That one sold out so quick. Just checking on the website, the shade Temper, which is on this eye, is currently sold out, but Ego is still in stock. So these retail for $39 and they are a duo. We have a cream product on the inside and the glass container and then more of a shimmer topper at the top. Once again, the packaging is quite stunning on these products. I love that she places Auric wherever she can. And I also love the detail and the time and research that she put into her product. I, I really enjoyed watching the reveal video and just learning more about the inspiration behind the products, why she chose them. And you can tell that this was not just something she threw together. This is a brand that she really wants to last indefinitely. And I think she's starting off really good. These are just my own personal opinions. When you open the cap to get to the cream product, I love how you have this protective sleeve that says Auric. And then you can just slide that off. And then you have your cream product on the inside. So this is the shade Temper. And then this is the glitter topper, shimmer topper on top. She wanted to create something that she describes as a smoke show in a jar. She describes these products as heads will turn these eye-catching shadow duos, create creamy matte or metallic glitter looks with two Lux formulas in a single gorgeous package. She says for the top lid, we get a micro glitter eyeshadow infused with high shine pearls. Inside the glass is a smooth, long wear, creaseless cream shadow. These eyeshadows are also paraben free, cruelty free, and gluten free. So I have swatches of both of the cream bases here. So it's gonna be the swatch for temper, the cream base for temper, and then this is a swatch for the base Ego. I really enjoy the formulation of the cream base. I think that they blend very smoothly onto the eye, as you can see in the demonstration. Um, and I just used the two products. So for this eye, of course, I used the cream base first as the base for all over my lid and for the lower lash line. And then I went in first with my finger because she said when you use your finger for the glitter topper, you're going to get more of that texturized look or you can spray your brush and wet the glitter formula and you'll get more of like, you'll get more shine and more of a smoother look versus the textured look. Considering I have nails right now, the brush and spray my brush, I felt picked, picked up product more and I like the look and the smoother look of it better. I feel like in formulation, the shade Ego glitter wise was a little bit more pigmented. I actually didn't have to spray my brush with the glitter topper for Ego as much as I had to for the shade Temper. So I found that kind of interesting and I just don't know if it's just the formulation of it because of the color or if, like, if the actual formulation is different. I wouldn't assume that the formulation is different. So I'm just wondering if maybe, you know, the different types of pearls and pigments going into the shimmer topper for Ego makes it a little more high shine upon application, even without having to spray your brush. I think these particular products are beautiful. I definitely would use these products for more of like a simple type of look. Like I just wanna put a little something on my face, but I don't wanna spend a lot of time. I think these products work really well for that. I think that the shades that she came out with are shades that the average person would not feel intimidated to use and they would really enjoy 
on their skin. In terms of shade range, I think that the pewter shade and the temper shade that I have on would definitely work for a plethora of complexions. I think for the shade temper, it is lighter, um, even with the cream base. So, so depending on how rich you like your eyeshadows to look, if you have a deeper complexion, you might not get as much pigment from this particular shade, which is on this eye, but it's, I don't feel like this particular shade will not show up on your complexion. It just may not be as rich as you want it compared to Ego or the other shade that she had that I wasn't able to get is Defiance, which, oh, that bronze gold looks like it's going to be some juicy goodness on the eye. Cannot wait for that one to come back in stock so I can pick it up. But once again, I think she really hit it out of the park with these two products in terms of trying to make sure formulation wise they're nice. And also they are going to be flexible and suitable for a plethora of complexions. In terms of the product being creaseless, I have had these eyeshadows on my eye now for... I would say a good hour and a half and so far no creasing and my eyes will crease depending on the shadow and the formulation of the shadow. Um, some of the shadows that I'm thinking of that do crease on my eyes, they typically will start creasing within 15 or 20 minutes. So, so far I do see no creasing of the base or the topper. So I do think that this is going to be a product that will last pretty well on the eyes. Obviously, the more I use it, I'll definitely keep you updated as to is this a product that's going to get me through an entire workday plus without creasing or, you know, is it creaseless on me for a few hours, but then I do just, you know, start seeing it crease after some hours of wear. The only other cream eyeshadows that I have are from Charlotte Tilbury. And I think, you know, packaging wise, packaging wise, they look very similar. Um, they've got, you know, the glass bottle on the bottom part. The Charlotte Tilbury product doesn't have a glitter topper, so that is a main difference between that. Formulation wise, so I'm gonna take the shade Sunset Rose because I think that one looks quite similar to Temper. So here is Sunset Rose from Charlotte Tilbury, and then this is Temper from Auric. And in terms of the shade, they do look similar, but there is definitely some difference to it. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury product is pulling a little bit more mauve versus the Auric product is pulling more rose gold. I do see a rosy hint to the Charlotte Tilbury product, but I just feel like it is pulling also like rosy mauve compared to the Auric product. They both have a smooth texture and I know for the Charlotte Tilbury product, that one does dry down and it can be worn alone. It does increase on my eyes either. So once again, I feel like if you've got, you know, the Charlotte Tilbury cream product and you enjoy them, then I think you will enjoy the formulation of the cream base for Auric. So first impressions, I'm really enjoying these two eyeshadows as well. And I am very impressed from the brand. I, I'm like, Okay, what's next? I'm ready for some more. So like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to go in with the Auric Glow Less and the Charlotte Tilbury product and use them as my highlight for today. So I'm only putting this much of the product from Auric on my skin because I don't need a, a lot. So taking my Bristles Beauty F09 RM brush, I'm going to just dab it here and I did powder my face with the Fenty Beauty powder foundation, but I left this area of the face unpowdered because I knew I wanted to put this liquid product right here as my highlight. And I think that looks really nice. I feel like from the pictures that we saw from uh, the promotion of this product, the skin definitely looked really highlighted. It looked very healthy and glowy. And this is gorgeous really really gorgeous now let's add some of the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter and because this actually has a larger applicator i'm just going to apply it to the skin like so and i'm taking my refer 19 brush and we're just gonna blend it out in the same place so with the Charlotte Tilbury product, like I had mentioned before, I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury product is going to give you that glossy, like water-like look on the face versus the Auric product just really leaves you with a beautiful glow. Obviously, Charlotte gives you a glow as well, but I think Charlotte's product 
because it is more of like a light reflecting type of product and it does have that glossier hue to it. I think you are going to get more of like a glossy type of look from the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter product compared to the Glow Lush, you are left with more of a glow. Like the glow can be subtle. I do think if I wanted to, I could build up this glow even more. But I think this is, the Glow Lush is really focusing on the glow of the skin versus the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter is leaving more of like a glossy type of look on the face. The differences are, in my opinion, subtle, but they are there and I feel the justification and the need for both. <laughs> that would definitely have to be your decision if you feel the same way. I feel like I would still reach for the Charlotte Tilbury product as well as Oric product. And just off assumption, I would probably go for the Oric product on days when I wanna wear like very minimal foundation. Like I'm putting on foundation, honestly, just out of routine, but not out of need. And then I would probably wear the Charlotte Tilbury product if I'm going for maybe a fuller coverage foundation where the focus of using the, the illuminator would be just to soften up the matte foundation and, and allow for it to glide easier on the skin. But I really don't want there to be a lot of base to the illuminator. That's how I'm thinking I will initially use the products. Obviously, stay tuned. I'll update you on how I've been using the products. But those are my thoughts on the new Oric brand. Those are my comparisons. All in all, I think she did it with this product launch. Once again, I love the research behind the brand. I love the details behind the brand packaging wise, but also, but also with the names and the products. And I think I think these products are great. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear them. Let me know if you plan on picking up the products, if you have the products, um, or if you are just now interested in the products just based on the video. The sweater that I'm wearing is from the brand Ch Time and True from Walmart. It's about $16. I have it in two colors and I love it. It's so comfy and cozy. And of course, I truly appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend it with me. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, definitely consider becoming a part of the Glam Girl Squad because we have a great time over here and I think you would enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.